Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Satina DS Super PH500M. This watch is available from Satina authorised dealers for €970. Satina have been making watches in Switzerland since 1888 and they've been making their DS dive watches since 1969. The DS stands for double security and the two core principles of double security watches are that they should be both water resistant and also shock resistant. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the watch comes in a watch box which is protected by this cardboard sleeve one removes and this is the watch box itself. I'll show you the interior. The watch comes wrapped around this fabric travel pouch as you can see and the interior is finished to a good standard with a contrasting green velour fabric and the green velour fabric is the Satina brand colour. So nice to get this fabric travel pouch included. It's something a collector could use uh, when taking the watch on holiday for example. With regards to the items, this is the warranty booklet and as you can see it's very thick because it's translated into multiple foreign languages including English. This, he this details the terms and conditions of the two year international warranty. This is the warranty card. Now usually at this price point, €970, Euro, one would expect the watch to have a 12 month international warranty. So to get two years of international warranty is very good. And lastly, one also gets this plastic certificate. Now this certifies that the watch has been tested and met all the criteria of ISO 6425. So as the name suggests, PH500M, this watch is 500 meters water resistant. And unlike other watches, this is actually certified as meeting the criteria of ISO 6425 at 500 meters. So Satina don't just test the watch to 500 meters, they test it to 25% in excess of 500 meters. This watch has actually been tested to 625 meters, which is incredible specification at this price point. So with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Satina DS Super PH500M. We have a 43 millimeter case diameter, we have a lug to lug measurement of 48.2. We have a thickness of 15 millimeters and we have a lug width of 20 millimeters. The nylon NATO strap is straight and parallel. It doesn't taper 20 millimeters at the lugs and 20 millimeters at the buckle and tang, which is signed with Satina's logo and laser etched to a high standard. Flawless brass satin finishing to the buckle, nice heavy gaze to the 316L grade stainless steel, no sharp edges, no burst to it, a nice mirror polished bevels to the edges so it's a very well executed buckle. Stainless steel hardware throughout, the two keepers are mirror polished to a flawless finish. Good attention to detail with this nylon NATO strap because unlike other nylon NATO straps you can see they've reinforced the centre section and this means that the holes aren't going to fray and elongate with regular use and it's often a common problem with nylon NATO straps that the holes fray and elongate but reinforcing the centre section and it's stitched to a flawless standard on the top side and underside, it does add extra strength. Nice thick weave to the nylon NATO, it feels like ballistic nylon and as you can see it's very nicely finished in a grey with contrasting black weave and the edges of the strap are woven with a black edge so it's a very well executed high quality NATO strap and also Nice heavy gauge to the keepers which are stitched either side to prevent them sliding out of position. No loose stitches. This is finished to perfection. With regards to the rest of the specification we have a flat sapphire crystal with clear AR coating on the underside. And the clear anti-reflective coating does an outstanding job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the silver mirror polished sword hands. The sword hands are the best finished set of sword hands I have ever seen on a watch. They are mill sub style hands and as you can see they have bevels or facets to them and the mirror polishing really is outstanding. I would describe it as Grand Seiko level. Also they've made the correct decision by using a contrasting white second hand with arrowhead tip because the white second hand contrasts very well with the glossy black enamel dial and also contrasts very well with the printed indices which are BGW9 Superlum Nova and the white minute six of the chapter ring. I like the fact that dial isn't over branded with unnecessary text or specification. We simply have an applied Satina emblem at 12 o'clock, Satina automatic at 12 and then we have DS and Super PH 500 meters, just the right amount of information. 
We don't have any additional specification and I think that they've got it just right. Perfect symmetry and the date complication is framed in white at the three o'clock position. So I like the size of the printed indices, the proportions of the sword hands and also the dial layouts. And also they've made the correct decision by using a glossy enamel black dial versus a matte black dial. It's very aesthetically pleasing. Now, one of my favourite aspects of the piece is the stainless steel 14-sided polyhedron. So, if you look closely, inside the stainless steel bezel, you can see there is a stainless steel ring, which is a 14-sided polyhedron. And 14-sided polyhedrons are also referred to as tetradecahedrons. Now, tetradecahedrons were a feature of vintage dive pieces from the 1960s, and it's a nice... Uh, elements which they've included to this because the DS Diver was originally made in 1969 and vintage uh, DS Divers did use these tetradecahedrons made from stainless steel. The quality to the 14 sides of this tetradecahedron in terms of their mirror polishing is absolutely outstanding. This is perfection personified. I love the way the tetradecahedron catches the light and also it frames the flat sapphire crystal very well because there's just a slight bevel which projects above the tetradecahedron. The flat sapphire crystal really is just absolutely gorgeous with a clear AR coating. They've made the correct decision by using a flat sapphire crystal versus using a double dome sapphire crystal because this is a thick piece at 15 millimeters, but of course it is going to be a thick sapphire crystal and a thick case back because this isn't 200 meters or 300 meters. We are looking at a 500 meter water resistant piece. With regards to the bezel, it's very well executed, gear tooth profile to it, flawless mirror polishing to the teeth, no sharp edges to it. And again, they've made the correct decision by using an aluminium bezel insert, which is fully indexed with 60 minute ticks. It reminds me of a Rolex 5513 or 5517 mil sub with these 60 minute ticks. Now, one could argue that the aluminium bezel insert isn't as scratch resistant as using a sapphire or alternatively ceramic bezel insert, and that is true. But however, this does give the piece a vintage tool watch aesthetic, and I think it complements the tetradecahedron, which is stainless steel, to use an aluminium bezel insert versus using sapphire or alternatively ceramic. I like the metallic tone of the Minute 6 and also the Arabic numerals, and it really does look like a vintage 1969 DS Diver. Now there's an inter interesting feature about the bezel which I haven't seen on a watch before. If you look closely you can see it actually articulates. The bezel is spring loaded so it actually locks into position. One cannot rotate it clockwise or anti-clockwise when the spring loaded lock is activated. In order to rotate the bezel one has to press down hard so I'm just going to do up the NATO strap and then I'll get better purchase on the piece because one has to really press it down and this is a unique feature of the PH500M that I haven't seen before. So usually dive pieces have 60 click or 120 click unidirectional bezels, but this PH500M has a spring loaded unidirectional bezel. Now, as you can see, I can't rotate it clockwise or anti-clockwise. It is now locked due to this spring loaded mechanism. And one has to really push down. It's got a very strong tension to the spring loaded bezel. So pushing down vertically on the watch releases the lock and then one can feel the clicking mechanism of the ratcheting mechanism and when one releases it automatically locks it into position and this is actually very effective because one cannot accidentally knock the bezel out of position and it makes it very suitable as a tool watch for example if a diver hits this off a rock the bezel isn't going to accidentally be knocked out of position because it is permanently locked unless one presses down very hard Nice loud audible clicks to the ratcheting mechanism. It is still unidirectional. When I press it down, it doesn't rotate clockwise. It will only rotate anti-clockwise. So it is anti. It is unidirectional as per convention. Nice loud audible clicks. Good firm resistance to it anti-clockwise. One cannot rotate it clockwise. No lateral side to side play whatsoever. No back play whatsoever when the lock is activated. So I'm just going to check the alignments. Perfect. The loom pip and triangle perfectly align with the 12 o'clock index on the dial and the 60 minute ticks on the chapter ring. So this is 10 out of 10 bezel execution and it makes a refreshing change to have this spring loaded action as you can see. It actually works very well. Nice firm resistance all the way around the 360 degrees and it's a unique feature of the DS Super PH500M. I haven't seen this on other dive pieces and it actually works very well.
no play in the bezel whatsoever, no back play in it, no lateral side to side play, and nice firm resistance to it, so it is outstanding. With regards to the crown, it's solid 316L grade stainless steel, no old finish, mirror polished domed cap, embossed with a satina emblem to a high standard. The crown is recessed into the right hand flank of the case and in the absence of crown guards, the recessing of the crown into the right hand flank does a good job because the flank effectively protects the crown from impact damage. So let's test the action. Absolutely silky smooth. This is 10 out of 10 sublime screw down crown execution. The screw down crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 500 meters and as I've detailed, this watch is actually pressure tested to 25% in excess of 500 meters, 625 meters. It's very strong specification and therefore it meets the criteria of ISO 6425. Silky smooth, perfect interface between the internal thread of the stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. So in the first position, one can manually wind the Calibre Powermatic 80.611. Absolute pleasure to manually wind the Powermatic 80. One can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up to its maximum 80 hour power reserve, which is very impressive. It feels silky smooth. In terms of manual winding, the resistance feels very similar to the ETA 2824-2, which the Powermatic 80 is based upon, so the winding of the mainspring in the 2824-2 feels exactly the same as the Powermatic 80, there's no discernible difference. Pulling it out to the first click position is the quick set date complication, and if you look close at the date window, which is framed in white, rotating the ground clockwise, advances the quick set complication. Nice positive clicks to the date complication. Each day of the month clicks over with a nice satisfying positive click. The indexing is very is very good. Also the positioning of the Arabic numerals on the date will is correct. They're not off center. The single Arabic numerals are perfectly centered within the date frame. So they've got the alignment correct and it's an absolute pleasure. Nice light resistance to the Powermatic 80. Again, it feels very similar to the 2824-2, which it is based upon. Putting it out to the second click position is the time setting position. And looking at the second hand, you can see it's now stopped dead. So one can set the time precisely to the second with the Powermatic 80. Nice firm resistance to the Powermatic 80. It feels very similar to the 2824-2. Silky smooth, no back play clockwise and anti-clockwise, there's an immediate response. When one rotates the crown clockwise or anti-clockwise, the minute hand immediately responds with no back play. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and that restarts the movement. So let's test screwing it back down. One has to give it a good firm push to get the winding stem into the movements, which I don't mind because it means it's a good solid movement. But there's an immediate thread pickup between the internal thread of the stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. So this is perfection personified. To put this into perspective, it's every bit as good as a Rolex triplock crown, which I regard as the industry standard. It's one of the best screw down crowns in the watchmaking industry. This is as good as a Rolex triplock, and bear in mind it's 500 meters, not 200 meters or 300 meters of hermetic seal. One can feel the compression of the O-ring inside the crown and the O-ring inside the, the crown tube, but I don't mind feeling the friction because it means that there's a good tight hermetic seal to 500 meters, and of course this is tested to 625 in reality. So I'll show you the screw down case back. So just bear with me and I'll remove the NATO strap so you can see the case back. Solid 316L grade stainless steel case back. Embossed with the Satina turtle as you can see. And I really like this curved pattern to the circumference as you can see. It's three dimensional embossing. Absolutely gorgeous the way it catches the light. The circumference is engraved to a very high standard and mirror polished to flawless standard. The milled slots are finished to perfection, no sharp edges, no burrs. Now, as one would expect, it is a deep and it is a very thick case back in order to withstand 500 meters of pressure. And I think in this case, it's perfectly acceptable because this is 15 millimeters thick. It has a thick sapphire crystal and a thick case back, which are entirely necessary in order to withstand 500 meters. So it is significantly thicker than a 200 or 300 meter case back. Finished to perfection, it's absolutely gorgeous to look at and I love the way the embossing catches the light as you can see. It's one of the best executed screw down stainless steel case backs I have ever seen on a watch. Just absolutely gorgeous finishing. This is 10 out of 10 case back finishing. And very impressive it can withstand up to 625 meters in reality. 
very strong specification at this price point, 970 euro. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see, it has not disappointed. This is clearly BGW9 Superluminova and we're clearly looking at five to six layers. I'm pleased to see that Satina haven't used the cost cutting measure of using three to four layers on the printed indices. This is clearly five to six, which is the industry standard. The benefit of using mill sub style sword hands is they allow for a large area, a large plot of loom. If you look at the hour hand, you can see there are five to six layers and a nice wide area of BGW9 application. The loom pip on the aluminium bezel insert is very well executed, as are the printed indices. I like the perfect symmetry and they've made the correct decision because they've also managed to fit in a small index beside the date complication at three o'clock. So that retains the symmetry. Very bright and it is continuing to glow for a good length of time. So this is top grade Swiss BGW9 Superluminova, no cost cutting whatsoever. And I think it's very impressive. I also like the color match. There's a perfect color match between the blue tone on the loom pip, the printed indices and the sword hands, as you can see. Also nice attention to detail because they fully loomed the arrowhead tip to the white contrasting second hand. And so one can clearly differentiate between the hour and minute hand and also the sweeping second hand and the symmetry of the dial means the legibility is outstanding. So this is 10 out of 10 loom performance on the loom pip, the dial and the hands. Right, so let's discuss the movement use because it's one of my favorite aspects of the piece. So this DS Super PH500M uses the Powermatic 80.611, which is one of my favorite Powermatic calibers. So I'll give you the backgrounds to the Powermatic 80. The Powermatic 80.611 is based upon the ETA 2824-2. It's been in use since 2012, so at this stage it's a reliable, well-proven workhorse movement. It's been in service since 10 years, so therefore the re reliability and the accuracy has been proven. This one has 23 joules. There are two versions, 23 joules and 25 joules respectively. Now, the thing to note is it runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 3 hertz. That differs from the 2824-2 that this is based upon. The 2824-2 runs at the industry standard of 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 hertz. So why does this Powermatic 80 run at a lower beat rate and frequency? When ETA made the Powermatic 80, they effectively modified the 2824-2 and they lowered the beat rate to 21,600 vibrations per hour and they lowered the frequency to 3 hertz. So why did they do that? Well, it doubled the power reserve. The 2824-2 has a power reserve of 40 hours. The Powermatic 80, as the name suggests, has an incredible 80-hour power reserve. So I'll put it into perspective. The Calibre 3235 used in the current Rolex Submariner dates has a 72 hour power reserve which in itself is very impressive but this even exceeds the Calibre 3235 Rolex movement. This has 80 hours, this has 8 hours additional power reserve. To get 80 hours is an incredible power reserve at this price point, €970. Euro. It has hand winding and hacking which is useful complications, also a quick set complication which I've demonstrated, it works very well. My favourite aspect of the Powermatic 80 is the use of the Nivacron balance spring. So Nivacron is a metal which is based upon titanium. Now why do they use titanium as the base for the balance spring? Well Nivacron is temperature resistant and also magnetic resistant. And remember the two core principles of DS watches, double security dive watches, is that they should be both water resistant and also shock resistant. From 1969 they were the two core principles, shock resistant and water resistance. This is ISO certified to ISO 6425 as 500 meters, so it meets the first criteria. The second criteria is shock resistant, which is met, which is met by using a Nivacron balance spring. So temperature and also magnetic resistant. Now it's not the perfect movement. The movement lacks an Etacron regulator. So why is that a negative? Well, often automatic movements use an Etacron regulator, and I'll explain why they use that. Usually when the movement is serviced, a watchmaker will break down the movement, ultrasonically clean the parts and then build the parts back up uh, with fresh lubricants and lastly regulate the movement using a time grapher in the conventional method. 
and they use an Etacron regulator and a time grapher in order to regulate it in the five standard positions of COSC chronometer positions. This doesn't have an Etacron regulator because ETA in the factory, when they make the movement, they use a laser to regulate the movement. Now, the benefit of using a laser versus a time grapher is laser regulation is far more accurate. This one is running consistently at plus three seconds per day, which is actually within COSC chronometer limits of minus four to plus six seconds per day. However, the negative is that a watchmaker cannot service this movement and regulate it using a time grapher due to the absence of the Etacron regulator. So in order to service and regulate this movement, it needs to be returned to a Satina service center. So I'm now going to discuss something that isn't uh, often referred to in watch reviews because I like to be very thorough. How much does it cost to service this watch and how often do you need to service it? How often do you need to service a Powermatic 80? Well, this watch should be serviced every three to four years. That's the recommended service interval for a Powermatic 80. And the good news is it's very inexpensive to service. One of the benefits of Satina being Swatch Group owned is the low cost of servicing of Swatch Group brand watches. A full service on this DS Super PH500M every three to four years only costs 160 euro. And I want you to put that into perspective. If you divide 160 euro by four years, that is a running cost of only 40 euro per annum, which is negligible running cost. So you could purchase this piece from a Satina authorized dealer for 970 euro, wear it for four years daily, and then you service it at only 160 euro. So that's a full service, includes polishing the case to remove scuffs and scratches, breaking down the movement, ultrasonically cleaning it, building it back up, with fresh lubricants and then regulating it with a laser and it's just incredible 160 euro and that is something i really like about satina now one thing i'll, I'll put it into perspective to service a rolex submariner dates the current model with a caliber 3235 chronology movement a full service costs circa 550 euro this costs 160 euro to service that is the difference 550 to service a rolex 160 to service a Satina. So something I really like about the Powermatic 80, yes, it's an inconvenience that a watchmaker can't regulate the movement because there's no Etacron regulator, but however, if one returns it to a Satina service center, it can be laser regulated, plus three seconds per day is outstanding within cost chronometer limits. So lastly, I'll summarize the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch meets two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So 970 euro is the price point at Satina authorized dealers. Yes, this is unquestionably excellent quality and yes, it is unquestionably excellent value at 970 euro. This is absolutely loaded with specification. 500 meters, we're not looking at a piece which is 200 meters or 300 meters, this is 500 meters. And not only that, it is ISO 6425 certified to 500 meters. BGW9, clear AR coating, and the finishing to the flanks to the case, the case, the bezel, and also the tetradecahedron or 14 sided polyhedron is absolutely perfection personified. The bezel execution is 10 out of 10, the screw down crown execution is 10 out of 10, and the finishing to the screw down case back is some of the best I've seen. There are no negatives to this piece whatsoever. It is an outstanding piece. So I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Satina DS Super PH500M. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.